WRC is back, this time under EA Sports Management, finally developed by Codemasters. They are veterans of rally games like Colin McRae in the Dirt Rally series. Despite being total rally veterans, Codemasters have never really developed a WRC title, believe it or not. This will be their first one. But here's the thing, if you enjoyed the likes of Dirt Rally 1 and 2, you'll be happy to know that WRC will feel extremely familiar. Let's start at the beginning. WRC doesn't have a linear way to experience it, something that deserves to be praised in this day and age. You may go directly to a career mode or time attack, do your own championships, or if you're starting with rallying in general, it does offer a rally school to learn the basics of rallying, covering techniques, surfaces, types of corners, ways to progress through a stage. The non-linear nature of a WRC allows anyone to engage with it at their own pace. But of course, the main point or one of the main points of this game will be the career mode. This career mode will make the player the star and some sort of a manager of a privateer team progressing through the weeks, trying to improve the relationship with the team owner called Max, getting better stats from team members and progressing the privateer team to higher and higher degrees of competence. The manager unlocks a rudimentary tech tree, if you can call it that. It will be more giving buffs to the engineers for better repair times. Doesn't really compare to the EA F1 series, it's just something very basic. Cars aren't really bought in this mode. You'll have to complete budget and performance targets to increase the budget availability to then get cars from higher regulations in your garage. It's not too hard to go over budget if you come up close and personal with the many trees around the track or decide to go downhill without the road. As any rally game is in reality, drive fast but especially don't crash. Still with this budget control you'll have in the game, it's really not hard to comply with it. In the career mode, the manager is extremely annoying updating the player all the time about happy or unhappy maxes about our performance or management of the team. The AI competition it will give you a good run for your money with a little bit of performance inconsistency at times. Sometimes they are really fast, sometimes they are slow, sometimes they catch after being behind. It could be the same in Dirt Rally 2 anyways. The career mode does not have an option to make a jump to a factory team as it is exclusively about your privateer team story in Rally. It is really not about your own career. Still, it is possible to do custom championships, very similar to what was done in the Dirt Rally series, which then will be running against those factory teams or with those factory teams. WRC brings multiplayer and the multiplayer aspect of this includes a few modes like global time trial with leaderboards, custom lobby of championships or club racing. At this time, no skill based matchmaking for custom championships is available, but I assume that most will spend their time in the single player. And in that case, there will be plenty to do because in terms of content, there is loads to choose from. You can expect 68 cars at the moment, all the way from the current generation of WRC cars like the Toyota Yaris or the Hyundai i20N, all the way to the lowly Vauxhall Nova, but still covering rally legends like the Group A Lancia Delta or the Group B monsters like the 205 T16 Evo 2. Still, there are a few cars missing like the Toyotas from the Group A generation or the 1997 Corolla, which is one that I really want to drive. If these cars are not enough for you, WRC will also bring a builder mode where you can create your own model for racing where it's possible to choose between layouts or rally classes with even a bit of interior and exterior customization. It's a nice little addition, but probably limited in terms of appeal, as I expect most will want to drive with the real rally cars. Not only have a good selection of cars, but we also have a good selection of locations. There are 17 rallies in total with 200 total stages. Some of them can go even upwards of 30 kilometers, so that's about 20-30 minutes rally. We have places like Portugal, Monte Carlo or the Bonkers Greece that I love from Dirt Rally 2, but we are sadly have fictionalized rallies like Scandia and the Fanatec Oceania. Wales slash England, which was a favorite in the Dirt Rally series, sadly is missing, for example. EA being EA will certainly bring more rallies under DLC to squeeze the maximum amount of money out of you. But regardless, I think that in terms of content and the way they can use the content, Codemasters has developed an extremely complete package, so at the price that the game sells and with the amount of content, while totally not complete, it does seem that the value versus price is well aligned, so I guess 
well done EA Codemasters. Okay, now for the important bit, the driving. I've had a great time driving the WRC thus far. In reality, my first impression stream was nothing but smiles about the driving. I love Dirt Rally 1 and 2. And since there are many familiarities with those titles, I really felt right at home driving all of these cars. They have brought a few important in driving improvements over the last releases, and the first one is the asphalt or tarmac driving. Gone is the limited feel or floatiness that was in Dirt Rally 2 in that surface. And because of that, the driving in all surfaces is extremely tight, responsive, and logical. Some will say that Richard Burns, 20 years after its release, is still a better rally game. But regardless, I can't really fault the driving in WRC. I think it has a difficulty and challenge incredibly well balanced. The variety of stages will make the driving really challenging with changing grip conditions, change of surfaces with an extreme variety of corners and scenarios to tackle. I can only say that the driving is absolutely wonderful and rewarding. And I drove WRC with the Fanatec DDB1 affiliate links in the description by the way and we have to be clear i think having a wheel is the best way to enjoy this title as it is with any racing of this type in terms of force feedback i would say it is okay better than dirt rally 2 but it's still a little bit on the muted side the default settings are fine i just needed to reduce the centering force as it made the driving around the center difficult with loads of spring effects one day, maybe, Codemasters will bring forward a more compelling force feedback, but I don't think it will be with WRC. Force feedback, for me, is serviceable at best. It does its job, nothing more than that. Driving with the wheel is, of course, the way to do it in a racing game, as it is adding a few peripherals, but still, you'll be happy to know that this isn't really totally necessary, as the A Codemasters team did a good job with gamepad support, which will then encompass plenty of drivers, both in the consoles and the PC. Still, a word of warning, as some wheel brands like Modsa or Ace Attack will not have their equipment recognized as of this moment, and others like Semicube and Accuforce are not totally supported, but will be recognized, you'll be, have to fiddle a little bit with the settings. EA Codemasters should patch these issues sooner rather than later. For Modza, there is an unofficial workaround. As time goes by, it feels like the big publishers use the user base as some sort of a glorified beta testers, ones that pay for the product nonetheless, to test the features and performance for future bug fixing. In the case of WRC, I didn't find many bugs or any crashes. However, in terms of launch graphical performance, it definitely could be much, much better on the PC. My PC isn't the beefiest out there, but I think that the 7700X and the 4070 should run an Unreal Engine title with no problems whatsoever at 1440p, as it does, for example, with the Seto Corsa Competizione, which, in my opinion, looks far better than this. As it seems to be the case with many racing game launches lately, the performance isn't the best, as with this setup, I'm only reaching about 60 to 70 FPS. Speaking of those graphics, they look decent, really not great. Uh, there are FPS drops and shader compilations that take too long. However, they look coherent and consistent, unlike Forza Motorsports, for example. In terms of how the color works or the light works, I think it's a pretty decent title to look at if you ignore the shader compilation, making everything a little bit of a smudge at times. Effects like fog or dust that lifted by the cars are extremely satisfying to look at and incredibly close to reality nonetheless. Other effects like water splashes, well, they look really dated. EA Sports has confirmed that there will be PC patches to resolve the performance issues. The PlayStation release of WRC seems to be in a better position in terms of performance and shader compilation speed. How long this fix will take is unknown at the moment. So, in conclusion, this new WRC, much like the Dirt Rally series was before, is a huge boon for the Rally Sim driver. While it may not be the most radical of titles in terms of realism, TM, it does a great job of doing a balancing act of immersion, challenge, approachability, long-term appeal, and has a huge content list from the get-go that goes in the face of what a game that sells for under 50 pounds on a, on a PC normally has. EA included with the F1 series and all. The graphical performance issues it has on a PC are more of a nuisance than game-breaking. Everything else around WRC is made with fun in mind, and this game is fun. Therefore, it is a recommended for me. 
still, your opinion is important. Let us know below what you think about WRC and what you have seen thus far.